Welcome everyone. This is the uh, Easy Power Thursday Technical Webinar. My name is Jim Chastain. And before I introduce our speaker for today, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, something that we, we don't normally do. We've pre-recorded this presentation because there's a lot of technical detail that we're trying to be as specific as possible on. Uh, what this means is Greg will be available uh, to answer questions real time if you enter questions on the chat box or in the uh, question box. So I invite you to do so. And before I turn this over to, uh, to Greg Pagello, our product manager, I would like to, uh, if you will, participate in uh, some poll questions that will help us kind of get together on the same page regarding this topic, which has obviously been uh, looked forward to with great enthusiasm. So the poll questions for this morning, and obviously there's no obligation, but we would appreciate your contribution and feedback uh, regarding uh, performing arc flash studies. Specifically, how often have you used custom values for working distance? And then how often using 1584-2002 uh, do you use custom values for conductor gap? And then just out of curiosity, how long have you been actually following the discussion on the development of the new standard 1584. So if you will, please, here's our first poll question. We would appreciate some feedback. There's no obligation and nothing is binding, but we do appreciate your participation and your support of Easy Power by uh, joining the presentation today. And I'm really curious to see how people weigh in on this. So we'll leave this open for about another 10 seconds. And we are getting good participation. So please don't let it time out on before we hear from you. Now here's how people have uh, weighed in on this. And that's not too far from what I guessed it would be. And then the second question along the similar lines is how often have you uh, used custom conductor gap? Same same perspective. Some of this information has been uh, adjustable or customizable if uh, it was required by the user, but it's not something that we, if you will, train people to utilize. And so we do appreciate the feedback. All right, so it looks like we got a quorum on this one. And, well, that was a cute question. And then finally, on the, uh, on the following the changes and how, how the dialogue has gone back and forth through to, during development, there have been a lot of uh, published opinions even before the standard was released. All right, appreciate everyone for weighing in on that. Let's share those results. Excellent. And uh, now at this point, I'd like to hand this over to Greg Pagello. Welcome to the presentation. This will be an introduction to IEEE 1584-2018 with a focus on major changes from previous versions of the standard. The IEEE Guide for Performing Arc Flash Hazard Calculations is a widely adopted industry standard that now includes an entirely new arc flash hazard model with revised procedures and calculations to predict arc flash hazard levels. The new 2018 version was recently approved by the IEEE Standard Association and is now ready for adoption. This presentation assumes a general understanding of the guide although we'll begin with a brief review. IEEE 1584 was originally published in 2002. Though generally well received and adopted, a number of subsequent IEEE papers shed light on parameters not previously considered that could lead to increased hazard levels beyond those predicted by the original standard. Two amendments in 2004 and 2011 further refine the original standard. Nevertheless, the planning process for additional testing 
to improve the empirical ArcFlash model was already underway. A collaboration between IEEE and NFPA had been formed to advance research around ArcFlash events and the parameters that affect their severity. Finally, on September 27, 2018, the new guide was approved by the Standards Association as IEEE 1584-2018. The IEEE guide is recognized by various agencies and consensus standards. These include OSHA, NFPA, and IEEE. ArcFlash tests. The ArcFlash model in the 2002 standard was based on approximately 300 tests. During development of the 2018 standard, nearly six times as many tests were performed. Testing facilities included those at SNC, Cooper, PG&E, Merson, and Kinetrix. Extensive testing was performed at different voltages, electrode configurations, enclosure sizes, and other parameters not previously considered. Here, the quantity of tests for the 2018 model at each voltage level are indicated. Note that the 2002 model did not include any testing at voltages greater than 2,400 volts in enclosed equipment. Calculation Parameters These parameters represent the system characteristics used to calculate arc flash. Voltage, bolted fault current, arc time, working distance, and electrode gap all remain from the original standard. Distance factor from the original standard has been replaced with enclosure size with variables of height, width, and depth. Enclosure type from the original standard has been replaced with electrode configuration, which further expands the original parameter to also include electrode orientation. System grounding from the 2002 version is no longer considered range of model. The IEEE 1584 ArcFlash model is an empirically derived model. It is based on data observed during testing. Due to testing limitations, data is only available for certain system parameters. The extent of these system parameters define the range of model. Similar to 2002, the 2018 model is only considered to yield consistent results within the recommended range of parameters. Range of model voltage. The supported range of voltage in the new ArcFlash model remains unchanged at 208 volts through 15,000 volts. Note the threshold between low voltage and medium voltage has changed from 1,000 volts to 600 volts. This will have an effect during the calculation process. Range of model frequency. The frequency model range supported in the new standard is now explicitly 50 Hz or 60 Hz and no longer inclusive of frequencies between. This does not represent a major change as these calculation methods are typically applied at either of the specified frequencies. Range of model fault current. As shown here, the range of bolted fault current supported by the new ArcFlash model is now dependent on voltage. There are slight changes to the low end of the fault current range, however the high end of the range sees a significant decrease for equipment greater than 600 volts. While a reduction to 65,000 amps is noteworthy, high voltage equipment do not typically experience fault currents exceeding this value. Range of model electrode gap. The range of electrode gap supported by the new ArcFlash model is also now dependent on voltage. Again, the most significant changes are seen on the high end of the range. A 50% decrease in maximum gap for low voltage and a 50% increase in maximum gap for high voltage. Similar to the previous standard, IEEE provides typical electrode gap distances. 
Although the quantity of equipment types in this table has expanded in 2018, the typical values are equivalent to those from 2002. Range of model working distance. The new standard now includes a minimum working distance of 12 inches as a limitation to the model range. Any smaller working distances could place a worker within the range of the actual arc plasma cloud and the effect of direct contact with the plasma cloud is not considered in the arc flash model. Similar to the previous standard, IEEE provides typical working distances. Typical values are equivalent to those from 2002 with additional equipment types from the 2018 model. Electrode configurations. The previous version of the ArcFlash model was based on enclosed and open air equipment types. The model for each of these types was based on testing of electrodes in a vertical orientation. New testing showed that orientation is an important factor for incident energy estimation and should be considered. Therefore, the enclosed and open air types were further defined by their electrode orientation. Enclosed from the 2002 standard is now defined into three different orientations, VCB, VCBB, and HCB. Open air is now defined into two different orientations, VOA and HOA. The meaning of these electrode configurations in the 2018 standard can now be described. VCB, vertical electrodes inside a metal enclosure. VCBB, vertical electrodes terminating in an insulating barrier inside a metal enclosure. HCB, horizontal electrodes inside a metal enclosure. VOA, vertical electrodes in open air. HOA, horizontal electrodes in open air. Comparison of electrode configurations. Before a comparison of arc flash between different electrode configurations can be considered, it must be understood that the electrode configurations also have a direct effect on arcing current. Here, we see the effect of electrode configuration on arcing fault current. VCBB providing the highest arcing fault of the three enclosed configurations and VOA for the two open configurations. As we know, it's the arcing fault current that determines the duration of the arcing event. Therefore, a comparison of arc flash from the different electrode configurations is heavily dependent on the characteristics of the protective device used to determine the duration of the arc. It is not a straight comparison. Only if one made an assumption of constant arc duration could electrode configurations be compared. This slide shows a comparison of the three electrode configurations for enclosed equipment types. Again, given an assumption of different arcing currents, but identical arc durations. Expectedly, HCB with electrodes pointed horizontally at the worker result in the highest arc flash. Here, we see a comparison with the 2002 standard. Similarly, this slide shows a comparison of the two open air configurations and a comparison to the 2002 standard. Enclosure size. Consideration of enclosure size is refined in the new standard. Previously, a distance factor based on voltage and equipment type was used to account for the effect of enclosure size. The new standard applies a correction factor based on height, width, and depth dimensions 
of enclosed equipment. IEEE provides typical values for this newly considered parameter. For each equipment type, a height, width, and depth are given. Typical values can be used where actual measurements are not available. Here, we see how the enclosure size can affect arc flash incident energy. First, note that enclosure size across the entire range exhibits increased levels above that of open air. Box opening, defined as the height and width of the enclosure, has an indirect relationship with incident energy. This graph shows that box openings less than 20 by 20 can be considered equal to 20 by 20, and box openings larger than 49 by 49 can be considered equal to 49 by 49. Between these sizes, arc flash decreases as box opening size increases. The one exception is for enclosures classified by IEEE as shallow. Shallow is defined as an enclosure with depth less than or equal to 8 inches, height and width less than 20 inches, and voltage less than 600 volts. Here we see the arc flash for shallow enclosure is significantly less than typical, though still greater than open air. Arc flash boundary. Incident energy at the arc flash boundary is now fixed at 1.2 calories per centimeter squared. Language from the previous standard indicating alternate incident energy at the arc flash boundary could be used is now removed. Reduced arcing current. The new guide retains methods to consider reduced arcing currents and their ability to increase arc duration. The variation is revised from a fixed 85% to one that varies based on voltage, with less reduction at higher voltage levels. Previously limited to low voltage equipment, the new arcing current variation correction factor is applied throughout the entire voltage range. Here we see the 2018 reduced arcing current across the entire range of 208 volts through 15,000 volts. Note that at 208 volts, the reduced arcing current is approximately 85%. However, as the voltage increases, the reduced arcing current is less of a difference from the 100% arcing current. At 15,000 volts, the reduced arcing current is greater than 95%. This comparison shows the reduced arcing current from 2002 at a fixed 85% is only considered for voltage levels less than 1000 volts. Arc sustainability. An explicit omission of equipment below 240 volts fed by a transformer of less than 125 kVA was cited by the previous standard. Revised language indicates that sustainability may be less likely at 240 volts or less when the bolted fault current is less than 2000 amps. Out of model range. Previously, the 2002 standard indicated that where voltage is greater than 15,000 volts, the theoretically derived Ralph Lee method can be applied. The new standard recognizes that system parameters can fall outside the range, however no specific recommendation of an alternative calculation method is provided. A common approach with the 2002 standard was an extension of IEEE formulas beyond the range of model except for voltage. As voltage was not a parameter in the 2002 equations, for systems greater than 1000 volts, the results at greater than 15,000 volts were considered invalid and gave way to the preferred Ralph Lee equations recommended and included within the IEEE standard. With the 2018 standard, 
despite the lack of a recommendation, a similar approach can be used, except for bolted fault currents. This slide shows a sample comparison of low voltage incident energy between the 2002 and 2018 standards. Note the graphs end at the IEEE range of model limit for bolted fault current, 106,000 amps. Extension of the 2002 model beyond the range shows untested, unconfirmed, yet reasonable results. Due to the calculation types used in 2018, a similar extension beyond the range cannot be recommended. This graphical representation shows the erroneous and unpredictable characteristics of such an extension. In the case of bolted fault currents exceeding the model range, a return to the theoretical Ralph Lee equations could be considered a preferred approach. In this low voltage sample, the Ralph Lee method provides a near continuation of the expected incident energy from the 2018 calculations. For high voltage equipment, the Ralph Lee method is increasingly conservative yet maintains its predictability. Current limiting fuses. The IEEE 1584 2018 standard adds language stating that current limiting fuse calculations are only applicable if the working distance is 18 inches and the electro configuration is VCB. System grounding. System grounding is no longer considered based on new test results showing no significant impact. Arc time, also referred to as the two second rule. The new standard retains a recommendation to consider the likelihood a person will remain in the location of an arc flash when arc time is longer than 2 seconds. When applying a maximum time limit, the new language advocates the use of engineering judgment and consideration of the work task to account for situations when a person's egress may be blocked single phase. Though the language is slightly revised in the 2018 standard, the new ArcFlash model is still expected to provide conservative results when applied on single phase systems. The voltage of the single phase system can be used to determine the arcing current, and the arcing current can then be used to find the arcing time and incident energy by using the three phase equations. DC systems. Again, slightly revised language, however DC systems remain unsupported in the 2018 standard. The calculation formulas. First, the equations from the previous 2002 standard. This slide shows the entirety of equations used in IEEE 1584 2002 low and medium voltage equations for arcing current, an incident energy equation converted from normalized, and finally an equation for arc flash boundary. For 2018, the quantity and complexity of the equations is greatly increased. First, the arcing current is calculated. The arcing current is now separated into a two-step process of intermediate arcing current and final arcing current. Here we see the single formula for intermediate arcing current which is used to calculate various final arcing currents at different voltage levels. Note the coefficients K1 through K10 in this equation. These coefficients are dependent on both the electrode configuration and voltage level. IEEE provides a specific coefficient lookup table for this equation and all other equations with coefficients. Here are the equations for the final arcing currents. These equations interpolate to the actual system voltage. Different equations are used based on the system voltage level. 208 volts through 600, 600 through 2700, 
and 2700 through 15,000. With the arcing current calculated, the next calculation is the correction factor. This correction factor considers the enclosure size and its effect on arc flash incident energy and arc flash boundary. Initial height and width values are calculated then an equivalent enclosure size. Finally, individual correction factor equations for shallow and typical enclosures. With a calculated arcing current, calculated correction factor, and the system parameters, the incident energy can now be calculated. Similar to arcing current, the incident energy is separated into intermediate and final equations. Here, the intermediate equations are specific to voltage level. Again, the final incident energy equations, also specific to voltage level. Arc flash boundary equations, also a two-step process. Here are the intermediate, and these are the final. At this point, the arc flash incident energy and arc flash boundary have been calculated. However, all calculations were performed without consideration for reduced arcing current. These formulas are used to calculate the correction factor for reduced arcing current. All formulas up to this point are recalculated using the reduced arcing current compared to the first calculations with the average arcing current and finally the arc flash incident energy and arc flash boundary have been fully calculated using the IEEE 1584-2018 method. This concludes this introductory presentation on the major changes in IEEE 1584-2018. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. So that uh, is basically the introduction to the changes that are in the standards. Uh, there is additional information that uh, we will be presenting uh, later in this week or later in this month on uh, some of the examples that are used in the standard for the different types of electrodes configurations. And uh, that will be part of the data collection webinar that we do uh, on Tuesday. So you, you want to be sure to tune in for that. Uh, all webinar attendees will receive via email a summation of all questions answered during the webinar, as well as the link to the video as it was recorded. There's a lot of, of really valuable information uh, in, buried in the details. And so I, uh, I look forward to additional questions and uh, more dialogue on this. You're welcome to, if you have specific questions, to contact me or Greg here at Easy Power. And uh, just as a point of note, as was announced in the newsletter yesterday, the 10.2, which is the version of Easy Power, which will include the IEEE 1584 updates, will be available uh, before the end of this month. And in early February, we will have a presentation specifically on the changes that's ref that is affected in the software and some uh, examples on how to apply those changes in the real world systems. Again, thank you for your present, your uh, attendance today. And by all means, if you have other questions, feel free to uh, continue to submit them in the question box. I apologize for the technical difficulties that we had. We will continue to try to improve that in the uh, future. And uh, we look forward to your attending other Easy Power presentations during this new year. Thank you very much, and we will see you on the next webinar.